What's up, Barefoot Nation? As you guys know, um, I grow a lot of tropical plants, but as you can tell also, it's winter. So today I figured I'd show you guys what I do with some of those more tender tropical plants. Let's go. Just so you guys can see the tropical plants that are dormant, um, I'm gonna show you, this is the uh, outer edge of the garage. So we've got a Musa Bostu, we've got two Bengal Tiger Cannas, um, a dormant Musa Velutina grown from seed, that's a Musa Bostu, um, a Lily Turf that I dug out, and then lastly I have a uh, Sikimensis Red Tiger banana. Now, it's worth noting something about microclimates. So that right there is the outer edge of the garage. And that is gonna be a lot colder than if you look up here on a shelf. So here I have um, some callas that are marked as zone eight plants. I have an Enset Glockum, um, another Musa Velutina, and uh, everything, I try to keep everything labeled so in case it goes completely dormant, um, I know exactly what it is. And now these plants are gonna be kept noticeably warmer by a couple degrees, um, which will help them if they're a little bit more tender. Like... So another section of dormant plants you can see are my big, beautiful elephant ears. Now these are the main three that um, are in the back corner, back right corner of my property during the uh, summertime. You can see they're all labeled and, and these are to be kept bone dry during the winter. Now, I just potted these up. I had them in the garage um, an unusually long amount of time because it's been so mild this winter so far. Um, you can see that they're obviously still dormant but I moved them inside, potted them up. And then I like to start growing these guys, you know, in like late February, early March. So this is my variegated shell ginger. And as you can see, I brought this plant in before frost in the autumn. Um, one of the main goals with these tropical plants that kind of serve as house plants for the winter is not necessarily that they put on all this growth in the house because chances are it's not going to be lush and full as it would be in, if it were in the sun. And even a plant like this shell ginger, which prefers morning sun and shade for the rest of the day or at least in the hottest part of the afternoon. Gingers and heliconias and all these kind of uh, tropical plants that you bring in from your garden outdoors, indoors, just be sure to give them good light. Um, this ginger in particular, this alpinia, is in uh, an east facing window, but it also gets, um, there's like a, the w there's a window that faces south, so it's a very well lit room. So. One of the things you'll notice is if they don't get enough light and is that the plants will stretch out a little bit and um, become what's considered leggy. So you can see that um, kind of these nodes here are nice and tight and then all of this new growth since it's been inside since November is kind of stretched out and not that that's a bad thing, it's just kind of less aesthetically pleasing really. And also another important detail is just cut back on watering. These plants, this ginger got water basically every day during the summer. However, I haven't watered it in about a week or so indoors at least because um, it doesn't get the same amount of sun and it's not photosynthesizing and, and growing at the same rate as it would out on your patio. All right, so this is my Chinese fan palm. It's a gorgeous evergreen palm that's actually surprisingly hardy. Um, but this one I, I've had for a couple of years. I think this is the third or fourth year. Um, and uh, it's really starting to gain some size. It's beautiful. These guys can take a little more shade than many other palms. Of course, they will grow. If you want them full like this, then definitely have them in a little bit of sun. Just like I mentioned with the ginger, this Chinese fan palm is not inside really to grow bigger, although it does put out a few more fronds over the winter. The main purpose of bringing this palm and um, the strelitzia and all kinds of other plants 
indoors is mainly just to get them through the winter. Even if they're in a greenhouse, it's still not a bad idea to have it be cooler or um, which is much more uh, sustainable as far as heating is concerned. You may also remember this beautiful areca palm that um, sits near the bananas in the bench uh, during the summer. And what an awesome way to have a beautiful, stately, and big house plant um, than to grow it outside for the summer. It's often underestimated, a plant in an outdoor space, how much more space it'll take up indoors. Um, it generally is like a lot uh, bigger. So here you guys can see the rest of my tropicals that prefer not to go dormant. Um, but since you can see that they're under a grow light that's pretty strong, uh, I'm going to wait until that light shuts off. But for you guys, it's going to be right about now. Alright guys, so now that the grow lights are off, you guys can get a little bit better of a look at all of the plants that I have underneath them. But before I do that, I do want to show you guys the supplies that I have down here briefly, just because it is an important aspect to know what stuff you should have in for your own grow space. First and foremost, the soil. So with all of my potting mix all year, I have it very high in compost. Um, in this case, it's particularly high, this batch, because I was just potting up my taros that were bare root in the garage. They're through with their cold period. They'll be growing, you know, within a month or so. Um, so there's a lot of compost in this mix. Um, and that's generally, uh, that's definitely a good thing to do just because um, compost does not, most potting soils are based with peat moss and if you let it dry down too much, which is definitely recommended for this uh, stage of the year with your tropicals, it gets very dusty and given that it's inside, I don't really like that extra dust. Uh, this is an old trash can uh, which serves as kind of a compost collection. You'll notice on the table here, there's this little fountain. Um, and what the fountain does, in addition to the plants transpiring, is add to the humidity in the air. Now, I am in the basement. You don't want it to be, and I don't have a hygrometer, I don't have a humidity gauge, but um, this, what this uh, little fountain does is not only add to the humidity a little bit, bump it up a little bit, but also um, it gives a nice little sound, as you can hear. And then the last little bit of supplies here that I want to show you guys is this little cabinet. Now this just makes everything a little bit neater. So starting with the bottom drawer, got to have some pruners easily accessible. Uh, this is my favorite style of pruner. It's called a bypass. And the reason is, is because you can see that the blade goes through that solid portion there. And that'll make a nice clean cut on woody plants as well as herbaceous, as opposed to the ones I need to throw away, which are the anvil types. What this does is it takes the stem and it crushes it. It does not make a clean cut. So if you're going to buy pruners, definitely go for the, um, the bypass ones. And these are discolored. They're about 20 years old. If you're not um, vigilant about cleaning the sap off when you are done um, with your pruners, they will rust. So that's important. I've got a little um, brush here and this uh, will do a better job than your hands will just to clean up soil whenever it would be there whenever you're done and then this is uh, just a the rain cap for the green um, watering can right there and uh, then just a few paper towels always handy to have top drawer here this is mainly tagging so I've got another little knife with in, um, its intention being for pruning and these are just some cheap tags off Amazon they come totally blank and with dirt, apparently, with this one. And uh, you just write the name on it, and these are worth their weight in gold. Well, they don't weigh very much, but they're useful. Um, these grow lights are bright, so I have a cheesy pair of sunglasses down here. Um, and then, of course, pens and whatnot to mark it. Uh, check out all these tags I have. This is basically most of the plants I've ever bought, and all the tags are right here. So that's a lot. Also, you'll see I have a bunch of watering cans here. Um, 
this has pond water in it, and this is just tap water. Generally, I use the pond water more often than um, the tap water. So basically, as far as what I do with these plants this time of year, is um, I, I cut back on water um, a little bit. You don't have to cut back as much as some of the house plants you saw earlier, because again, I mean, you need to have sunglasses down here if you're looking at that thing for any um, significant period of time when it's on. Of course, it's off um, for the night. As far as fertilizer goes, I don't fertilize at all, really. Here, you can see all these plants, and this is not designed to be aesthetic. This is just designed to get these tropical plants through the winter. So, these are all spaced out and, in, in, you know, given good design um, during the summer. So, one of the main thing, one of the biggest plants here is this philodendron salome. And this was in the ground last summer. I dug it out before frost, and uh, I fully intend. It did wonderful in the ground. It tripled in size. I fully intend to put it back in the ground next season. Um, even in the northeast, they do still appreciate a little bit of shade. Um, this is my Heliconia siticorum, and all of those flower stalks are old. So, you know, I tell me in the comments, but I think they're developing seed. There were hummingbirds that were um, kind of like pollinated or definitely feeding on the flowers over the summer. So I think the seed might be fertile. Like how cool would that be? Um, got a lady palm. I put that in sun kind of rapidly and I didn't acclimate it. So you can see the result. It's not happy with me. Um, that was months ago too. And they grow very, very slowly. So if you guys have lady palms, which they're one of the nicest, um, Definitely very slow acclimation and don't put them in sun, um, in my opinion. So, the next plant is this um, Strelitzia. I bought this at Lowe's over the summer and it was just marked as Strelitzia. So it could be the white bird of paradise, which I already have a giant one. However, based on the leaf shape, how they're smaller, and um, the edge is kind of pointed as opposed to rounded and they just look different. I think this is the orange bird of paradise. Um, bird of paradise, try to get them as big as you can because they take years to flower, generally about three years. Uh, right here you can see this is a pup off of my Alocasia caladora. Um, it's it was in the ground but um, you can see that it's doing very well here this is a defoliated musa velutina which is a pink velvet banana um, it's defoliated because uh, I thought at the time to get rid of the aphids which it was infested with um, that I would just defoliate it bananas grow fast um, and like I said, this grow light is like like you saw the sunglasses. So it's hard on your eyes that way that it's not, not that it's so bright, just that it's not the full spectrum. It is a great light though. The plants respond wonderfully to it. It's called Best uh, VA off Amazon. It was expensive though. Uh, I do have that light on a timer. Um, that means that I don't have to come down here at 7 a.m and off at 6.30 p.m. every day. It just does it automatically. It's wonderful. You can see back there behind the Velutina banana, I have some cordy lines. And those were around the giant white bird of paradise over the summer. Again, this is not designed to be an aesthetically pleasing space necessarily. This is just designed to get these plants through the winter. Um, right here is a, a new variety for me of alocasia it's called tyrione it's supposed to have the look of portora which is a big giant ruffled leaf alocasia um, but it's supposed to mature smaller and the way you spell tyrione is like this i got this from brian's botanicals and 
Um, it's been in a one gallon pot the whole season, so it has not grown out to its mature size. However, even in that one gallon pot, it did very well. Slower grower because it's a dwarf plant, but um, it is a great variety. Um, you can see an anthurium there, um, a mojito elephant ear. These do not like to go dormant in my experience, and it's not happy, but there's, the leaf is still serving its function, and there's a new one coming, and there are pups. So mojito and all these colorful small uh, collocation varieties that they're very colorful, they don't produce big corms like the uh, green variety. I treat them like alocasia in the way that I just let them grow. However, the bugs, the aphids love them, so that's a problem. Um, another kind of interesting plant, I think this is a, a ginger from the Zingiber genus, um, but I bought from my grocery store a uh, tropical flower arrangement with different heliconias and stuff, and this was just a cutting, and it rooted while it was in the vase, so I was like, hey, I'll pot it up, and it's doing wonderfully. Right there I have a variegated peace lily. That's a semi-dormant Fontanesi elephant ear that's always in my pond. My unmasked taro, and then this is just a bowl of cuttings of uh, arrowhead and, and uh, pothos. Lastly on the table here, these are stolons or runners from the, um, the colocasia, the big green ones. Um, generally these don't grow, but sometimes they do. Um, Chances are I'm just going to end up composting them. I mean, maybe this one would grow just because uh, it's got a little bit more of a bulb, but still. Um, yeah, I've got a, a pothos cutting next to the uh, spray bottle. Um, and this is a cool variety of uh, sweet potato vine. Um, it's called uh, Chipotle South of the Border. Um, funky name, but nonetheless, very different um, I had this planted in with the ginger and that's just a cutting. These are pineapples, believe it or not. Oh, well, maybe in time I'll get to have some fruit. This is a heart of the jungle elephant ear. Um, and it is usually also in my pond. I did also forget to mention this little coffee cups taro. Um, again, it doesn't like to go dormant, but it's been growing like a champ. I mean, this is its newest leaf. And by no means is that a big taro leaf. You can see the frickin' aphids that came back. Um, <laughs> but despite the aphids, it's still a gorgeous plant. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you haven't joined the Barefoot Nation, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell and drop a like if you liked it. And uh, let me know down in the comments what you thought of the video. Also, if you guys have a video idea, be sure to put that in the comments below as well, um, and I'll see what I can do about making it. Lastly, I need to give a shout out to one of my loyal viewers, Ash, who gave me this video idea. So Ash, I appreciate it, and uh, thanks for watching, y'all.